Hi, I'm Susan Bateman, and I started the store in 1971. My degree is from textile design and weaving here at the University of Kansas. At the time, it was the largest handloom weaving department in the country. It really was something that I stumbled into, and um, because I was thinking about doing physical therapy, and uh, in that you had to take courses that you could do physical therapy with people. That's how I got into it, and it was just taking a one course, and it was just like, I have to do this. We had to order everything. We had to order everything, and most of the place, uh, places that we could get yarns appropriate were out of the country. And so I just thought, well, maybe I should have a store that sold those products so that people would have them here in the United States. I'm Melissa Parson. I went to KU, uh, but my degree is in interior design, but as part of that degree, we took fiber classes, including weaving classes, and that sold me right there. I, I knew I wasn't interested in interior design the way I was in weaving. After I graduated, I started here, and that was in 1992, and so I've been here for a few years. This is our third location here in downtown Lawrence, and started off much smaller and gradually grew and grew and grew. And slowly things changed. In the 80s and early 90s, we were like two doors down from where we are right now. And then in the late 90s, we moved over to here. And in between, I gained a partner. <laughs> I'm Jim Bateman, I'm Susan's husband is my official title. The additional things are um, jack of all trades. I do everything except weave, spin, knit, and dye. <laughs> um, early in their life, uh, a store's goal is to survive. And obviously, the yarn barn had survived by the time I came around in uh, 1987 or so. And that survival was a result of Susan's being tough. <laughs> we do see people from all over. So people who are, you know, going on vacation and um, are on the highway and decide to stop. But we also have people who say, you know, this has been a bucket list thing for me and I've come down specifically to go to the yarn barn. Um, probably more people from the Midwest than, um, than any other region of the U.S., but, but literally people from all over, including Hawaii. <laughs> the university draws so many people, you know, who come to um, conferences or whatever, or students here, um, that, uh, that that also expands kind of the, the draw. So there is always a lot going on in downtown Lawrence. Um, there are restaurants, there are tons of independent stores, um, and we're only about a mile from I-70, so uh, people who are crossing the country on I-70 and need a break to stretch their legs, this is a great place to do it because you can eat, and then if you are the only one interested in textiles of your car load, uh, everybody else can go do other things from going to a museum, seeing a movie, or just shopping, uh, so there's lots to do so they can get out of your hair while you do what you do. These are mom and pop stores we have here, just like us. Um, we have a toy and game store, which is huge, with a huge draw. Um, we have a shop that just sells soda of quite the varieties. We have a cheese store across the street from us, um, a mom and pop department store, homegrown shoe stores, clothing stores, uh, furniture stores, restaurants, uh, a candle maker here nationally known candle maker here. Those are just a few of the things. Some years ago, Susan and I were at a weaving conference in Colorado, I believe, and one of the vendors was there, Shaq Spindle, and Barry Shaq, who with his brother farm, um, started Shaq. And um, Barry was asking me what I'd like to spin on. I said, I don't spin. Shut up and sit down was Barry's response, and he taught me how to spin. I can identify broken parts very quickly, and uh, this is something we have to provide a lot of service for, for customers. They bring in spinning wheels or they call and say, X doesn't work on my wheel. What's the problem? Or I've got a broken piece, can you get it for me? And we do a lot of that and those jobs usually fall on my plate. And we have not just the wheels to try and not just the wheels that you can purchase and take with you, uh, but we have the accessories, flyers, bobbins, um, the kind of add-ons that you might need. Um, we 
tend to keep those in stock. So we carry a lot of different kinds of spinning fibers, primarily wool, um, but we have a wide range of natural fibers that are breed specific. So Polworth, Jacob, um, Cheviot, uh, Rambouillet, obviously a couple different merinos. Um, so we have all of those in just undyed. And then we have quite a few dyed fibers as well. Whatever you're looking for, whether it's a hand dyed from Greenwood Fiber Works or just an undyed that you can really experiment with the qualities of that breed, um, we've got some options for you. Conferences are great because they give an opportunity to meet face to face with the customers and in many cases a good opportunity for us to meet with our suppliers. It's a small industry. Uh, the suppliers and the vendors were often uh, first name basis for sure. We go out to eat together, we go out to eat with our competitors because we're all friends in this business. Um, part of the fun of working here since it's not just for survival now is working with the variety and strength of the staff we have. We have stuff for knitting, for weaving, um, for crochet, um, and even off-loom things like pin looms and, and, and inca looms and that kind of thing. So, so we carry just a ton of stuff. And everybody who works here does this stuff. So we have opinions. If you need opinions on should I get this thing or that thing, we can say, oh, well, I've used those and I like this one or that one. Um, and here's why. We answer the phone. I think that's a big thing. I'm proud that we can answer the telephone and everyone who answers the telephone either knows answers to questions customers ask or knows who in the store can at any given time. And that, that's incredible. I feel very strongly about people needing to be creative, that it's, it's something that is mentally stimulating and uh, just important to get away from everyday life by being creative. So our classes are held upstairs in our fabulous classroom that overlooks Massachusetts Street, nice and bright. Um, and we have classes that kind of shake down into two categories. So classes where you're learning on a spinning wheel, and we also have classes for people who want to learn what you can do on a drop spindle. So we have both of those. Um, and we have them uh, kind of three semesters, a fall semester that goes into the winter, a winter spring semester, and then a slightly shorter summer semester, and we have spinning classes in every semester. We do a lot of classes, a lot of classes. Not only do we do the classes, but people call us daily uh, when they have questions about a product or a piece of equipment or whatever. And uh, by teaching those people about what they are doing is so important. In spinning, what is really fun is that when we see people come in, not only uh, getting equipment, but when we see them actually buying the, the fiber and, and taking it away, we know that they're going home and using that. My degree is in textile design and weaving, uh, but at the university level, usually it's pretty art-oriented. So it's not necessarily the everyday item uh, type of work that you do at a university. I, I learned very early on what art is, is about, or any kind of creative uh, thing. Um, a customer had come in and she'd done it. She had made a toilet paper roll cover out of plastic canvas. And that lady was the proudest thing <laughs> that she had ever done. And that's what it's about.